We have a very healthy, juicy, tropical wave working its way into the Caribbean. We also have a lot of Saharan dust to talk about. That could enter the U.S. as we get into next week. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we're going to talk about that tropical wave. It's likely not going to develop, but it is going to bring some heavy rain, especially to the Windward Islands. The Saharan dust plume is getting further west into the Caribbean. Post 4th of July, it likely will start to enter at least parts of the North Gulf Coast and eventually Florida. So we're going to break down that, have a timeline on that, and then stick around to the end of the video. I think we're going to be in a quiet period, at least in the short term, but there are indications that once we get towards the middle of July, we could start to see an uptick in tropical activity. I'm going to break down some model forecasts and show you there the likelihood of getting more development as we get into July. Before we get into the video again, if you want to stay updated on all things hurricane season and all things weather, hey, you have to hit subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up as well if you find this content helpful. All right, on to the video again. In the short term, the good news out of the deal is officially from the National Hurricane Center, there's no new development expected over the next seven days. Although we are tracking a few little swirls and tropical waves out there, I'm going to highlight those. And then I'm going to give you a closer look at the Caribbean. Again, I'm going to have that long-range outlook towards the end of this video. If you're looking for that, there's going to be chapters in this. You can kind of scrub along to the video, to the portion of this video that makes sense for you so you don't get hung up. I know your time is valuable. There you go. There is that tropical wave entering the Caribbean. We're going to break that down. We have another swirl northeast of Bermuda. There is Bermuda. That is likely, that's non-tropical and likely not going to develop. We have another little swirl southwest of the Azores. Here are the Azores. And then another very healthy tropical wave emerging off of Africa. I will say that the main development region that resides right on through here, my telestration is hot today. There it is, it is much quieter. It is much less favorable for development than what it was when Brett and Cindy were out there. You see there's hardly a cloud in the sky. And that is partially related anyway to some of that Saharan dust, which we are going to take a look at in just one second. First, I want to get my friends in the Caribbean updated here on this tropical wave. Again, this is unlikely to develop. It may get a highlight from the Hurricane Center, but still, you see that right here. Flare up of thunderstorms in the purple and red. So Barbados, we have some gusty thunderstorms around. St. Lucia, those are trying to work in as well. Trinidad and Tobago, we will likely see those thunderstorms as a result of that tropical wave over the July 3rd, July 4th into the 5th period. There's also some healthy thunderstorms off the coast of Central America from Nicaragua into Honduras, Costa Rica, Panama. That is likely not going to develop as well, but we are going to see gusty thunderstorms as a result. The brighter purples are representing some pretty intense thunderstorms just off the coast of Nicaragua and Honduras as well. But again, unlikely, not we're likely not going to see any development with that because it's just hanging too close to land right now and will be on shore momentarily. This is the vorticity, meteorologically anyway. This is the spin a couple thousand feet above your head, but I want to show you this again to show you why we're not anticipating development with this. All this yellow and red here, that's going to be the spin being picked up by the model. The wind here, the arrows, is the wind field, and this is why we call it a tropical wave because it's not a tight circulation. It needs to be that to be considered tropical, but... Notice how it has, it comes in like this. Let me grab my arrow and then it goes up and kind of kinks back down. This little wave, this little U, if you will, upside down U, that wind field again needs to be closed to be tropical. You see that it tries to get going a little bit as it drifts up north. So for us in Jamaica again, we could have some inclement weather coming through on July 4th or July 5th, closer really to July 5th. But still, the wind field represents there that open wave. So we could have some thunderstorms, some gusty thunderstorms toward Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. Likely not going to have any significant development there. It's just going to be rainy. It's going to be gusty. going to be windy a little bit as that comes through on July 5th. And again, there's no significant development elsewhere. As we get into July 7th, here's another little tropical wave. You see that there, that little upside down U, that kink, heading towards the Lesser Antilles, especially the Leeward Islands. Still, no significant development is anticipated with that. In terms of the rainfall, again, there's going to be a lot of heavy rain. This is going to be over the next five days here. This is going to be through the end of the week. We could pick up a few inches, maybe two to three inches to put through parts of Trinidad and Tobago, maybe up to an inch or two in Barbados. Some of these uh, numbers are a little low. Sometimes the forecast under underdoes the amount of rain when you're talking about these really juicy tropical waves. Nonetheless, we're going to watch out for that for St. Lucia all the way into Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, Grenada, and then into Trinidad and Tobago as well. You see uh, Jamaica getting into next week could pick up anywhere from a half inch up to an inch of rain from that same tropical wave. 
one of the reasons why we've kind of backed off the activity a little bit has because uh, because of the Saharan dust. It was uncharacteristically low through June. It helped to get Brenton City going because it went unimpeded for the most part, at least with the dry air. The wind shear backed off a little bit. But you see in the brown color here, here we go with the Sahara Desert all covered up in brown because that's where the dust is coming from. Cabo Verde Islands, we are engulfed in that dust. We have more dust through that main development region. Again, it's one of the reasons why that that little wave, that big wave coming off of Africa is going to have some trouble developing. Into the Caribbean, we have dust over Puerto Rico, into Jamaica right now. And this is the area that post 4th of July is going to lift up into the United States. I want to show you that from a model perspective. Again, working through all that white on your screen represents where we have that thick dust through Cuba at this point. This is later on on July 3rd towards Yucatan Peninsula. And then you see what happens. It kind of pinwheels right up into parts of the United States. So by July 5th and 6th, we could have some of that dust getting into Louisiana, Texas, towards Houston, into San Antonio, maybe even into the Florida Keys, parts of the Bahamas. It's really thick, the brighter white representing where we have the thick dust. That's going to be back through Jamaica, into the, Car uh, into the Caribbean, into, into uh, Puerto Rico. And then it lifts further north, that secondary plume, if you will. Big chunk of high pressure sitting right here in the Gulf of Mexico, and that is going to kind of let it meander through the Gulf. It's going to help to keep the Gulf quiet tropically anyway, but then also help to push more dust towards Miami, Orlando, and Jacksonville, and then another reinforcing shot of that dust into the North Gulf Coast. So that is just one of the things that we are watching. And then taking you further out into the future, there's another dust plume. So really through the next couple of weeks of July, the dust is going to be prolific. It's one of the reasons why it's going to help keep the tropics at bay. And again, climatologically speaking, this is now the quietest part of the official hurricane season, at least one of back the half of November as well is pretty quiet. So it's always the best time. Again, it doesn't always work out like this. It's not always gospel that we don't have a storm in the first couple of weeks of July. But climatologically speaking, it's the best time to maybe plan a cruise. They're cheaper because it's hurricane season and we typically don't have activity. So that's a pro tip. But again, I caution, that's not gospel. It doesn't always happen. It's just a, something to think about. Thankfully, it's going to pan out this time around as well, that we're not looking at any activity. Speaking of that, though, later on this month, this is a kind of complex chart here. I want to direct your attention to the right-hand side of your screen where you see the blue box, that's the Atlantic Basin, and where that shaded peach color is. Okay, so this is the ensemble forecast, the European ensemble from the ECMWF, the meteorological agency in Europe. And that peach color means that we have a significant at 5%, meaning that there's a higher opportunity for greater than the climate mean of some tropical development. So back over here, you see this little orange bar. So climatologically speaking, during the third week of July, we get 0.4 storms. That's, again, that average, that mean over all that period there, okay? From 2003 to 2022. So you see that there. That's, where, that's what the climate has been defined. So over that period, 0.4 storms develop over the third week of July. Well, the European model wants 1.1 storms to develop. So that's why we have that area of peach coming up, because that's a higher than 5 percentage opportunity for that to happen. The deal with this is it did really, really well in June. It forecast the hot start to the season. It was right on the money. So a little more credibility to it, a little more paying close attention to this, although I will say it was hot last year to start the season. And that really didn't come into fruition. So you still got to take this with a grain of salt, all as it is in the model. But it certainly piques our interest. You have to look for some bigger forcing mechanisms to see if it's onto something. And there is something bigger, a little convective pulse, if you will, to come through the Atlantic Basin later on in the month. So it does add a little bit of credibility to it. I want to take you out another week towards the end of July. And I'm going to keep on showing these again in these tropical updates. The number one, see, check the verification of this. But to also keep... Uh, keep on showing you long range and then breaking down the meteorology behind that to see again you can't just show the model without showing the meteorology behind it if there's something to force sometimes these things are way out to lunch and anyway so the fourth week is even quieter climatologically speaking you see there 0.3 that's that little orange bar where my little mouse is we still have that peach shaded color and again and again that we do have the significant color showing up and then the European wants 1.3 storms to develop. That's the forecast mean, again, in that time frame, that fourth week of July. So we could start to see a little uptick in tropical activity as we get towards the third and fourth week of July. We'll see if it happens. Again, there's 
meteorological things going on in the atmosphere that would promote some tropical activity. And we know, again, from talking about this a lot, that the Atlantic is juiced out there because of the water temperature. It's way above normal for this time of the year. So that's why we have to watch that even closer. It gives a higher opportunity for storms to develop, given we back off the dust by that time. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you found this content helpful, hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us a lot. I want to welcome all the new subscribers to the channel. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for trusting these forecasts. And again, if you do want to stay updated on all things weather across the Caribbean, the United States, and especially as we are in hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that, and we will catch you next time.